Good afternoon and welcome to a home vlog. It is official. Every single thing that we've planted, except for the cucumbers, has sprouted. So we sprouted some mint, we sprouted some basil, we sprouted two tomato plants. Cucumbers are still kind of lagging behind. I don't know what's going on with those. Hopefully they'll start, uh, I, almost, I almost said that, hopefully they start hatching. Hopefully they sprout soon. Do, do seeds hatch? They might. Oh, I caught you. Oh. What are you doing in there? Oh yeah, you editing? <laughs> I am editing. Yeah. Look at your office, it's a mess. I just cleaned it up. I know, we got a lot of stuff in here. Well, this is the clean version, so. Oh boy. <laughs> Doing good. Thanks. So you said all of the, the plants are growing? Yeah, except for the cucumbers. I wonder if the cucumbers will grow in that thing. Oh yeah, they should. Even though it's like a little tiny thing and they're like regular sized cucumbers? Yeah, I mean, everything else is regular sized too. There's regular sized cherry tomato plants. Yeah, but cherry tomatoes are like little versions of big tomatoes. Yeah. So, did you check on the cucumbers that you put outside? Yeah, they're not doing anything either. No. What the heck? Yeah. Who's in charge of cucumbers? <laughs> so one of the things that I wanted to do during this self-quarantine was I wanted to get a bird feeder and somebody sent me a thing that they're like, we do this with our students. They're a teacher and they do it with their students and they basically, they make a bird feeder out of a milk jug. Kind of just by cutting the side out of a milk jug and hanging it up with some bird seed in it. So. We're gonna do that, put it outside. Hopefully we'll get to see some birds. I bought some bird seed off of Amazon, real cheap. I didn't realize how cheap bird seed was, but super inexpensive. And then I've got an old milk jug that we're just gonna cut, the, cut a hole in the side of and try to figure out how to hang it somewhere. We only got palm trees out in the back, so there's not like a branch to hang it from. I used to have a stand that went out, there was like a, like a plant stand that went outside. I don't know where it is. I'm gonna try to find it outside. I think it's in the garage. I'm gonna do some looking. All right, so I couldn't find that uh, little thing that I was looking for to stick in the ground that we could use as a bird feeder holder, but I did find this, which is, a, it's actually an angle bracket for underneath like some wire rack. And if I kinda screw it to a tree like this, it's got a little hook on it that I can dangle the uh, bird feeder from. Easy. I think we're gonna do that. And I'll just use some like, I don't know, like some twine or something to go to the, the handle of the jug fill it with bird seed and put it out there and see if we see any birds. There it is, it's perfect. And then we'll just hang the jug from the end of it there and we'll be done. By the way, a prosperity pig looking like he knows exactly what we're feeling in the month of April. Wow, pretty intense. All right, so here's my milk jug. Basically all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a square out of it, but I'm gonna leave kind of like a little flap here so that it's not just wide open because like squirrels will try to get in there. So maybe I'll make it a little bit like, like almost like a doorway so that the little tiny birds can get in rather than like the big old squirrels. Then we'll just put some bird seed in there and hang it up. Mm, maybe not, maybe I'll cut that little flap off. Then I'll actually probably extend this up a little bit to make it a little bit bigger for the birds. There we go, it's ridiculous looking. By the way, this plastic cuts so easy with a razor knife. That's why I've got a few like overcuts over here. So just be careful if you're doing this. So here's the bird seed that I got. It's gourmet bird seed. I know that we have cardinals back here for sure. And I'm assuming maybe it will like, I don't know, attract some other birds. We'll see, we'll put some in there, hang it up. Hopefully we'll get some birds. What are you gonna hang it from? I put a little thing out there on the, on the tree. Oh. See? Wait, what is that? It's like the angle support from our closet. By the way, our closet is probably gonna fall down because I took that out. I'm just kidding. Oh. <laughs> well, one of our closets did fall down one time. I know. That's why I was like, no, wait. Hey, buddy. This baby woke up from his nap. We made a birdhouse. Oh. Do you wanna go see the birdhouse? What do you think? Yeah, that's a yes. Is there like a call that I do for the birds? Like, come and get it. Caca, caca. Caca, rawr. <laughs> it's dinner time. How do I get it so that it doesn't spin around like this? Now we wait. Come and get it, birds. Lunch time. Come on over. I promise it's good. All right, time to check on the old, oh no, what happened? <laughs> oh dear. I, we didn't see this actually fall, so I wonder if maybe a bird tried to land into it and it like couldn't hold them up, so it just fell over? I don't know. What do we do? Maybe I just screw the, the jug to the tree. So, I know that the video just started, but it is dinner time. I know, I feel like this is what happened yesterday. Yeah, but like, I, I don't know, Jackson's been being a little bit like fussy today, so well, he's taking so, up a lot of time. But I think that he is going through the four, the four month sleep regression. I think that's like for sure happening. But I also feel like something else is happening. He's growing. Yeah, like he's, he's not, I feel like he wants to tell us something and he can't. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like, 
I know that obviously all babies probably want to tell you something and they can't because they can't speak, but I just feel like his little personality is coming out and he really wants us to know something. Right. But we, we can't know it until he learns how to talk. I, I wish I could explain what I'm saying. It's just a feeling that I'm getting that he wants to tell us something. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's Does like it? he's a ghost. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Maybe if we get a Ouija board, do you think you no. would have? Oh, no, I would never. Especially not in our new house. Like, oh man, we used to play with Ouija boards all the time when I was a kid. I did one time when I was a kid, and it was at my grandma's house. She lived in like near St. Augustine, kind of. And I just remember that um, one of the girls that was like at this little, we were, I forget, we were outside doing it by like the beach because she lived by the beach. And it was, somebody told a story about how they threw away the Ouija board. This was after we had already played with it, so I had already like messed up and already Oh, this it. particular Ouija board, they threw it away? Yeah, they threw it away, like in the tr in the dumpster, like because it was like a community, like a dumpster. And it came back, it was in her house the next day. And this was the one that we played with. And I was like, well, messed up. Shouldn't have done that. Man, and now, and that's 2020. The last time. <laughs> no, is it my fault? Oh, no. I mean, it's probably mine. I was just like, yeah, we played with like like literally once a week. I was like, yeah, Ouija board. Who's this ghost we're talking to? Who bought you a Ouija board? I played it at my friend's house. Who, like, I never had any friends. This girl wasn't my friend. She was like a friend of a friend. But okay. I never had any friends that had a Ouija board. I was friends with like hippies. And they're, what, hippies are cool with Ouija boards? Yeah. Why? Because they know it's fake. I don't know, I just feel like, have you ever seen the movie Ouija? Yeah. And that was a movie. Well, you know, it comes from I've somewhere. also seen the movie The Ring. Well, and I've played every single VHS I've found since then, and nobody's crawled out of my TV. Oh no. Yet. Right. <laughs> we don't have a VHS player anymore, so we don't even have, well we have a DVD player, but like, what, what is it, like the streaming ghost now? Yeah. Okay. Is that a thing? You stream this movie and in seven days, uh, a ghost will crawl out of your internet. <laughs> Okay. I forgot to show you guys what we're having for dinner. In case, in case you were wondering, you might not be, but we're having barbecue chicken, pimento cheese grits, and collard greens. That sounds real good. It does, and I just realized that pimento cheese, according to this, is cheddar cheese, cream cheese, and roasted red peppers. Wait, so you have to make the pimento cheese? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I didn't know that that's what pimento cheese was. Who came up with pimento cheese? I feel like it's a thing from like the 60s. Well, I know it's like a southern thing, I think. Is it? I feel like it is. I feel like it was one of those things that happened in the 60s when they were doing like all those like weird things with jello. It says, pimento cheese is a favorite in southern cuisine. It's decadent, versatile, and delicious. It's usually served as a spread for sandwiches, bread, and crackers, but we cooked it up in a way to sneak it into your dinner. Oh, those jerks. Yeah. Why are you sneaking stuff into my dinner? You don't even have to sneak it in. I like Listen, it. Listen, you didn't sneak it in. You put it in the title. <laughs> That's not sneaky at all. They're, They're the worst spies ever. <laughs> And there it is. Now we just have a milk jug screwed to our palm tree. Property values are skyrocketing. <laughs> what you making? Okay, so now I'm making the pimento cheese grits. Sorry, so far, me... cream cheese is gone in the grits. I gotta get my little cheddar bites. Ooh, cheddar bites. And then I chopped up my red onion, or my red uh, pepper. Oh yeah, some roasted red peppers. So we're gonna add those. Chicken's cooking. Oh gosh. Okay. And now we just stir this all together. Yeah, you stir it up. Little darling, pimento cheese. Oh yeah. Oh, and then I also do um, salt and pepper. Ah, homemade pimento cheese. Property values are skyrocketing. <laughs> so that's that's what's happening today. I'm pretty excited that I know how to make it now. I didn't realize that that's all it was. Yeah, we're gonna make some pimento cheese every night. Pimento cheese on a burger. Oh yeah, that's real good, isn't it? That it tastes delicious. So maybe we'll do that next time we have a burger. Yeah, and we could even do it without the red peppers. And it wouldn't be pimento cheese. I know, you just you cheese and cheese and uh, what's the other not sour cream cream cheese. Yeah, but then it wouldn't be perfect. Okay. <laughs> but you know what else we need to do tonight? Maybe after dinner. We need to make some pickles. The perfect dessert. <laughs> I wanted to show you guys my cherry tomatoes here. Once these get a little bit taller, I have to cut it down so that it's only one plant. And then this is our basil over here. And there's some more cherry tomatoes back there. I don't know if you guys will be able to see the mint, but it's in there. 
Yeah, it's just starting to sprout down there. You can barely see it. Oh dang, this looks awesome. This looks very like colorful. I don't know, it's like red coloring in there. It's like a party on my plate. So here's the picture that they sent and here's what it actually looks like. I feel like this is a lot of grits, so like that's gonna be really filling. But they had it to where you put your chicken on top of your grits and I'm not necessarily like a food mixer, but you are. Yeah. So good. what did you think? Did you like it all mixed up? I like it, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I sort of like put it, it's like sort of touching. You're touching. Just barely. But I'm excited to try this. Did you have your, any of your chicken yet? Not any of the chicken yet, but I've had the grits and the and the collards. What do, you, what do you think of the pimento cheese grits? Good. You like it? Yeah. Okay, cool. But yeah, I'm very excited to eat this. And so far, some of you guys were asking what we thought about Marley and Spoon, which is the food subscription box that we've been getting, like the meal subscription box that we've been getting all these dinners from. I like it so far. I think it's pretty good. Do you like it? Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Oh, another thing too. Um, I don't know if you guys can see, but Jackson's here in the stroller. Mm -hmm. We got a high chair for him. Yeah. He's just not here yet. So he's gonna sit at the table with us like a big boy. Yeah. We're very excited for that day. It should be coming here in a couple of days. It's one of those like, uh, I don't know what you would call like a, not transitions high chairs. Convertible, like, like it turns. Convertible, yeah. yeah. It's like all the different stages of his life until he's like a little kid. I don't know and why you're like so a dark. High chair. Hello. Yeah, it like really got dark. There it goes. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I just have to block enough of the sun behind me. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. But yeah, so he'll be sitting at the table with us like a big boy, which is very exciting. We did stop giving him the cereal. So I don't know if, if you go to the live shows, you might already know that we talked about it in a live show. But um, it was just, it was hurting his little tummy and he's doing okay with the, like the breast milk. So he won't be eating with us at the table. Like we're not going to be feeding him the cereal, but he'll be here with us hanging out. Yeah. Yeah. And it won't be much longer until he starts eating the cereal again uh, because he's almost five months old now. But we, I think we're just waiting for his little like tummy to be fully developed. Yeah, at six months. Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. Something that we were watching the Ballengers and they were, she, uh, Jessica was mentioning something like she didn't really understand what most people think is like the definition, like if we say six months, he's gonna start eating at six months. Does that mean the beginning of six months or the end of six months? Oh, because she was talking about their update videos. Yeah, like developmental yeah. stages. So, cause when, when they do their update videos for Luke, which is their son and he is so super cute. Well, they have a few sons, but their newest little baby Luke, he is the cutest little kid ever. And he's just like a month and a half, I think, older than Jackson. He's like one month older than Jackson. Yeah, and so um, she does these update videos, which I find <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I find them to be very helpful because I don't know what we're looking for as far yeah. as like, is he supposed to be rolling over? Is he supposed to be sitting up? Is he supposed to be, what is he supposed to be doing? Right. So I think those videos are really cool and helpful. Yeah. But she was saying, do you do it at the beginning of the month? So if she's going to do a six month update, do you do it at like May 1st or do you do it on May 31st? Right. You know what I mean? Like right. the beginning or the end of the month? I don't know. I feel like the beginning. That's what I would think too. That's, I don't know. But yeah, so, so far I think Jackson is very like right on par with what he's supposed to be doing. I think so too. Yeah, but I'm not totally sure. So you know what they say, when the baby's asleep, the parents will make some pickles. <laughs> Cause that's what you do. Plus yeah. I wanted to try to make pickles. We're gonna make pickles. So we are growing cucumbers in our arrow garden but we wanted to make pickles with some pickles that like some cucumbers that we just got from the store. Well, yeah. we didn't get them from the store where they were delivered, but maybe when our, this is like a practice run. Right. So when we get our other cucumbers that we grew, we can make our own pickles. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. Why not? Yeah. So I ordered this, I didn't realize that it was this gigantic. It's <laughs> a lot of canning and pickling salt. And on the back here is some instructions for making dill pickles. Wait, how much salt do you need? That's this, not for this, we're, we're doing very little salt. Oh, okay. Like this recipe though is like ridiculous because it wants you to uh, use 16 pounds of, of pickles. Wow, really? Two gallons of water and like we have, half of this thing. It's we just have like, one pound of pickles. Yeah, it's so much stuff. And they're like, we want you to make like five or six, five gallon buckets of, of pickles. And I'm like, wow. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna make like one little jar of pickles. That's enough for us. Yeah, so I went online and I found a really easy recipe for pickles and it's basically just salt, water, vinegar, dill, pickles. Garlic. Or cucumbers and garlic. Yeah. So we're gonna try to make it right now. All right, so here are our ingredients. We got some pickling salt, some white vinegar, 
I got a mason jar. These are just called mini cucumbers, but they say the best kind you get is Kirby cucumbers. I don't know if these are Kirby. Me? And we got some fresh dill. We got a cup of water. And we got four cloves of garlic. So it only called for three cloves of garlic, but I thought it would be better with a little more garlic. Yeah. Yeah. We have to cut up the cucumbers first. And smash the garlic. And smash the garlic. A uh, quick question for you guys. Has anybody else made pickles before? And somewhere when I was researching how to make pickles, it said to trim the ends off the pickles for a reason. There's like something like the flowering end of a cucumber has to be not in this pickling. But if you get pickles in a jar, like, like, um, uh... What what are they called? Um, like what's the what's the pickle brand? Cla Vlasic. Vlasic. Yeah. Yeah. The the butt of the pickle is in there. The stem, but the other end is the flowering end. Is that end in there? Yeah. Like if you get a whole pickle. I don't know. Maybe they use something some some other thing. I don't know. This is why I'm asking them. Like oh, maybe okay. they know. I don't know. We just had a thing of whole pickles, and they had the both ends. Yeah, it's true. Very strange. I don't know. We're going to cut them off of these. We're going to cut the ends off and then we're going to slice them into chips. Yeah. So we're going to have like hamburger chips. But I want to make, do, do you think they should be like a little bit thick? Yeah, yeah. Just like a little, like little thick boys. Okay. But not like, we're not going to do like chips like this. They're going to be like a like quarter inch thick. Okay. Oh, you know what this calls for? Time lapse! <laughs> Also, while you're cutting up your cucumbers and putting them in the jar, you need to put in two large sprigs of fresh dill. So now we have to make our brine and we take a cup of water and then three quarters of a cup of vinegar. There's my vinegar and then a tablespoon of salt. One tablespoon of salt. Oh my goodness, this is so much. And they say that you can use kosher salt. Oh, is that the same thing? I don't know. We, I specifically got pickling salt because we're pickling stuff. Right. And then we boil it until the salt is dissolved. I feel like we're making a penny flashlight again. It's the exact same stuff. Water, vinegar, and salt. This time, we're heating it up. So wait, does that mean that you can use pickle juice as your acidic liquid when making a, a penny thing? Yeah, I think so, but I think you just have to make it more salty. Oh, and if you guys don't know what we're talking about, we'll put a link in the description down below to the video that we did yesterday where we made a flashlight out of pennies and an LED. And the acidic like juice, basically like pickle juice. Basically like pickle juice. Yeah, that was pretty cool. And we made a lava lamp. Oh yeah, and a pan flute. I feel like the lava lamp was the coolest thing. <laughs> Could have been the pan flute. It already smells like pickles. That's like, so intense and we haven't even done anything yet. Yeah, it smells super pickly. Now, oh. this on the other hand, does not smell like pickles and smells really bad. Oh no. Yeah. So that was fast. Like as soon as it was boiling, we took it off and we started it and now it's just like... It just looks like a clear liquid so there's no... you don't see any of the salt or anything. The stuff on the bottom of the pan is just where the pan like is... Uh, Old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so now... and so now we just have to let it cool slightly and then we pour it over top of our pickles. When I okay, we're doing a lot of cooking, right? Because we're all like quarantined and everything. All of these recipes, like, oh, and even in the science experiment, none of the recipes give you true, like, disc like true numbers. Like, I need yeah. a numerical, like, let it cool slightly. What does that mean? Just like under boiling, because that sounds still very hot. Yeah, like let it cool for five minutes. Let it cool. Like if we pour it in now, it's gonna cook the cucumbers a little bit, right? Is that what we want? I don't know. I need them to tell me like like. I think you do. You want it to like, to get in there and like expand, like make the dill become aromatic. Yeah. And the garlic like go out. So I, I think we want to put it in now. I was scared to like hold the funnel. I can hold it. Because it's gonna be very hot. Okay, are you ready? Yes. Okay. Now I'm scared to hold it. You can do it. Oh no, no, oh no, okay. Oh. Just do it, all the way in. Dang. What do I do? Uh, I think that we... I shouldn't have done it. You should have done it. Oh, darn it. 
We gotta okay. clean this up though. Look at this mess that no, we made. I know, I know. Uh, so we are making just a little bit more of the brine and because it didn't quite fill all the way up this jar. I think this is, we really tighten this because we're gonna shake it. Do you like pina coladas <laughs> and getting caught in the rain? What if there were like pickling bartenders? I mean, they use pickle in bars. No, you know what I mean? Like if they had like a bar where they just like pickled stuff and you, instead of like shaken, you know, like shaken, not stirred. Yeah. But it was like you were shaking up the, the pickle jar. Oh dang, I wish that these weren't all stacked on top of each other like that. I'm uh, sure it'll be okay though. We'll shake it like more. Yeah, is that? Oh yeah, kind of like. that kind of getting them wiggling? them up a little bit. And now we are not canning this. So we're not gonna do the whole thing where we like boil it down and like make sure that this like like pops in and stuff like that. We're just making refrigerator pickles. So these will last for like a couple of weeks rather than like six months. Oh, okay. So. I think they're gonna be good. I think so too. Yeah, so I just gotta get a little bit more in here. Okay. All right, I'm gonna do things a little bit differently. H A double R A. E A N spells Harrigan. We've been listening to all these like kids songs on Spotify and that's one that they keep playing. I still don't really understand why that's a kid's song. It's like It's from a musical. It's from like a nineteen forties musical or something. They had kids songs in the forties. It's true. Now I gotta okay. shake it again. So that's that's pretty covered, right? Yeah, I think so. Let's see. So when you're also when you're canning, you're supposed to leave like a half an inch from the top. So I'm gonna do that anyways. Okay. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it. So now we didn't let that cool at all. It was cool enough. Okay, so now we have to let this cool on the counter until it's cool, like actually all the way cool. And then we put it in the fridge until it's all the way cold, at least two hours. But I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna leave it overnight and then we're gonna cut to a clip where we try them in the morning, right? Yeah, I think so. I, I want them to be like pickling as long as they can be. Yeah, and we'll keep like, we're gonna eat, we're only gonna eat a couple in the morning and then we'll let you guys know throughout the week. Yeah. How they are. We're gonna have so many pickles. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. We're getting down to our emergency snacks. You know what I just realized? What? We have like a whole boatload of candy left over from Halloween. Oh, <gasps> do we? Yeah, but oh, none but of it's chocolate. I was gonna say, it's not the good candy. Yeah, so uh, when we went to Field the Feast, this was one in our like, like take home bag. This was from the Ganachery. It's like a granola. The Ganachery is a place at downtown Disney or Disney Springs that's like a, they sell ganache. Mm -hmm. um, it's really delicious, but this isn't super delicious. No. It's not terrible. It's just kind of weird. Oh, and Field the Feast was when we did that food festival that was all the Disney chefs. Oh, yeah. And it was at the Corn Maze place. Yeah, where we got our cucumber seeds. Oh, yeah. That we are eventually going to pickle. Oh, my gosh. Full circle. It really is. Look at that. Mm -hmm. Look at us. Look at us. <laughs> I'll link that video down below though if you guys don't know what we're talking about. It was really delicious. That's the one thing, I know we've already said this, but that's like the one thing that I'm really missing the most is food. Like just being like, oh man, you know what I want? Sushi, you know what I want? A chicken sandwich, you know what I want? And just being yeah. able to get it. I mean, it's probably better for us health-wise that we can't go out and eat all the time. But, and I, I really do enjoy making food at home. Like I've been having a good time making these dinners at home and mm -hmm. I found a lot of recipes that I would totally make again, but I do miss going to a restaurant. I miss like getting a pizza yeah. rather than making it. We didn't, yeah, the pizzas that we've been getting haven't been great, like the, the crust that we can, because we can't find any, like that's all that we could find was that thin like cracker thin crust. Maybe it'll change. I hope it does. And we can get actual pizza dough, or we'll make some. But yeah, we've got I was stuff. able to buy flour, so. Hmm. So I think that's what we'll do next. Yeah. But for we the used... longest time I didn't, sorry, for the longest time I didn't have any flour. Now we have 10 pounds of flour. But we don't have any of the other stuff. Like we don't have cheese. We gotta get, now we gotta get the other stuff. So. And yeast, apparently yeast is hard to find. Well, I think we have some yeast. We have a little bit left, but yeah. like, not very much. But that's what we're doing right now is we're eating the like emergency chocolate stash from like a weird gift bag that we got. <laughs> <laughs> My, what a pickle we've gotten ourselves into. <laughs> what does that terminology mean? Like pickles are great. Where did that come from? Like, why are you in a pickle? So, uh, it came from a Dutch phrase, which was basically translated to sitting on a pickle, <laughs> which means to be drunk. And then in The Tempest from William Shakespeare, he used it again in the same context, to be drunk. Mm -hmm. 
And then over the years, it just translated or like progressed from that to being in a difficult situation because when you're drunk, everything is more difficult. This is like a very like a uh, brief version. Right. Yeah. So there it is. Yeah. We're in a pickle. <laughs> but not the drunk kind, just the difficult kind. Yeah. But not even really a difficult kind. Yeah, it was kind of easy to make those pickles. I hope yeah. they turn out good. I know, I hope so too. So we check the pickles because we're not supposed to put them in the fridge to do their like final cooling until they have cooled completely on the counter in just the jar. Right. And they are not cool yet. So no. we checked them, they're still kind of warm. So we're gonna put them in the fridge tonight at some point. We're gonna come downstairs and double check and see if they're cool like enough to go yeah. in the fridge. And then we will try them in the morning and we're gonna put that clip in right now. All right, so it's the next morning. We took our pickles out of the refrigerator. They look like pickles. They're the right color. I feel like, yeah, I feel like they're pickles. Let's try them. Okay. Oh yeah, they look real good. Get one that's like deep down in there. I think it'll have the most flavor. Okay. Feed me like a little baby. Good. They, they need. It needs something else. What? But they taste like pickles. I think that there, there's like other pickling spices and spices that you can add to it. But like that's a pickle. That's like yeah. the start of a pickle. Right? That's really good. It's good. I do know what you're saying though. Yeah, like, so one of the recipes that we found said it to add pickling spices, which we don't have. We only had the pickling salt. salt. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I think it's pretty. We also added extra garlic. Yeah. And so they're like a little bit tangier almost. Okay. Want one more? Yeah. Pickles for breakfast. I don't know, I like them. That's good. That's real good. I think yeah. once they sit in the refrigerator for a little bit longer too, I think that's what it is. I think we're getting a little bit of the cucumber still. They're like nice and crunchy. Yeah. I think these would be awesome on a, on a sandwich. Well, guess what you're gonna have for lunch today? Pickle sandwich. <laughs> But these, I give them a thumbs up. Yeah. I think that they are nice and tangy and crispy and I kind of like almost perfect. I think we'll make them again. Nice work, everybody. Yeah. Well, I guess at least the birdhouse is getting a little bit of use. The squirrel's just like living in it at this point. Wow. I can't believe that those pickles tasted like almost perfect pickles. I was surprised at our reaction being so amazed. I think that they probably tasted really Delicious. Well, there you have it. That is our reaction to pickles. Hopefully they were good. Yeah. I really do love pickles. There used to actually be a restaurant here that the appetizer that they would give you, you know how restaurants are like, here's some bread. Yeah. Here's some muffins. Maybe not muffins, but you know what I mean? They give you something before your meal. Yeah. This place would give you a jar of pickles and you would just eat the whole jar of pickles. And it was awesome. They were so good. Cause they were like halfway between pickled and not pickled. Right. And I think that's what these are gonna be. Yeah. I and they were huge too. Yeah, oh, they were so good. They were so good. Real good. I wanted to eat those right now. Me too. Hopefully we're gonna eat them. Hopefully we just ate them in that last clip. Oh yeah. But I'm excited for these pickles and if they turned out good, I'm excited to make them again. Yeah, me and too. what other things can we pickle? Okra. Eggs. Beets. Pig's feet. Pig's feet. <laughs> Everything. Yeah. So, all in all, fantastic day. Yeah. We made pickles and we tried to catch a bird. Uh, on camera. Yeah. We did not. Um, hopefully the birds enjoy the bird feeder though. Hopefully at some point. Yeah. I'd like to see birds. Yeah, yeah it'd be nice. Yeah. So, fantastic night. And with that being said, we will see you guys tomorrow. I'm Kent. I'm Sam. We're from Pennsylvania. And now it's time, time to pay the price. price.